Hello, welcome back. Uh, did some spells, found some sites, did some summons, we did an angry ether lord. A bunch of stuff. But most importantly we got attacked by uh, Lilifors, not Zoko though. Uh, there's no water allies lunging at us yet. But uh, yeah, a bunch of um, battles with Uli. Well, let's see. Uh, first up, Greenwoods. I think this is the one just north of the... no it isn't. So this is my conjuration site province. So there's quite a bit of stuff here. I There's something really frustrating about this, which is that last time I moved a bunch of mages here to help defend, so I set up a communion. But they're not here, because I think this guy ritualed in. Um, so he arrived in the ritual phase before all my mages moved here. So even though we um, correctly moved in a bunch of defense, uh, it's not really here. There are some mages, and we've got all the boars and stuff. Uh, but So it's a bit unfortunate, we're slightly one turn behind. So he's got his um, thugged out giant guys. We do have some spells going off though, we've got relief up. But stuff like that was scripted. So we get into this position where... The, the point is to have like a little astral communion that can just spam soul slay. Um, this is a spell, Cyclops by the way. It's not a summon one. It's like an in battlefield spell, it's not uh, like a conjuration summon that we've been doing. Um, yeah, we can't actually kill this guy, but we can just kind of keep him in place for a very long time. Uh, because we can summon far more things than he can kill. So he just kind of sits here for a while. Uh, the crossbows of Fleming Arrows are doing quite a bit of damage, but he's got regen, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, and I'll spare you watching the whole thing. Basically what happens is that our mages start to rout, but he routes as well, and he just cuts through this stuff and retreats. Uh, so we keep Greenwoods, but he kills 220 things. He kills 55 boars, 37 black harpies, 15 sacreds. Uh, none of our mages there or anything. Some of our mages did retreat. So they retreated into a bunch of surrounding provinces, which is a shame. Uh, but no one died, I don't think. So, I don't know, awkward one. Uh, next up, Molliton. So this is the first province my dudes retreated to. So there's some guys here, and then Chantress. Uh, there's a random Hydromancer here. I think we just summoned that guy this turn. He's retreated here. Um, same sort of story though, we can summon a lot of stuff. As long as we can summon lots of stuff, he's not actually going to win. He's just going to lose slowly. Um, although in this case he does actually win. <laughs> he does actually take the province because we don't have quite enough stuff. Uh, looks like we've decayed him though, it's pretty cool. Seven reinvigoration. Hang. How do we decay him? I guess there's a... oh, we've got a death mage here. I wouldn't have thought that would be in range. There's a decayed spell that's like 25 range. I'm kind of curious if this guy gets a disease or something from being very old. Max age, 1100... maybe not. Ah uh, yeah, so we lose that one. But again, we don't lose any mages or anything. So it's not too bad. Uh, Elkland. This is the army. It's moving into just north of the Throne of Knowledge. We're still killing some independents. Uh, it's a lot of mages. All the yellow guys are 82 mages, there's like 40 of them. So, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of a tough one to beat, you know? Uh, 94 sacreds as well. Very difficult. Uh, we did take an underwater province, which is good. Uh, also got attacked in Dwek. There's another retreat province from that first battle in our conjuration site, so there's lots of stuff here now. There's stuff that retreated from the first battle and stuff that retreated from the second battle. Um, so this one we do win, but again it's just a case of a large number of turns just summoning junk. Uh, yeah. I think the salamanders are pretty good. Because he's only got 5 fire resistance. 
And Salamanders at least resist the fire burst from the flame brand. So that's something. <laughs> but I was thinking they might help um, fatigue him. Let's see, 64 fatigue, let's see what a few turns of combat do. 58, yeah, his fatigue's going down, but when the Salamanders get in combat, his fatigue does actually start going up. Which is weird since he has fire resist. Let's see. I don't know, I've watched these a few times, but... Uh, yeah, let's check. So we keep that one, 123 kills, but we keep it. Uh, green Sea retake, just moving in. Underwater. Uh, Wesh, Will of Fours and Chibnasu. Uh, and then Gent. So this is my fort right over on the coast here. Uh, just some PD, because we moved everything out of this province. We did have tons of stuff patrolling here, but it all moved into my conjuration site to help defend it. Um, so it's now there. Um, so there we go. Uh, and then a bunch of events. We've got a ton more um, Leekos in our territory again, including on Kamatan, I think. I'm not sure. We got a ton of negative events on Kamatan this turn. Uh, and it's been put immediately up to 123 unrest, which is crazy. Um, I think they've stopped trying to leeko these provinces because they have harpies, but down here you can see these provinces are like 44 unrest, 56, 30, 44, 51. I feel like the leekos have moved down here because this is where I have the fewest harpies. So our cap is over 100 fatigue, which means we can't recruit. It's gutted the income here. Um, although these underwater provinces, really nice income. 94, 85, so that kind of offsets the income loss, but yeah, we can't recruit mages or anything until we fix the unrest. Uh, and all this stuff is getting unrested pretty hard now as well. Um, yeah, so... Shame, because we we've been like permanently patrolling our cap. We've got a bunch of these guys patrolling as well, who have 4.3 patrol strength each. I'm moving more patrollers over this turn to keep it down, but yeah. Uh, yeah, tons of events. So lots more plague and lots more um, just random events. Uh, Battle and Kamatan from one of the random events. Uh, some walls and stuff. Uh, yeah. When lands is open, we can storm that, and we are. Uh, Gent is just under siege from one giant. And this is what the map looks like now. So the Little Force giants hit these provinces. They bounced off Drake, bounced off Greenwoods, put Gent under siege, and took Molliton. Molten kind of suck, there's quite a few pearls in Molliton, three pearls. Uh, and here's the giant stack in Elkland. Now, one of the things I've been prepping for is because Elkland is a forest. We heard our big nature mage in Greenwoods. And, um... Beckoning is in the spellbook. I can't remember what school that's in. Um, but you know that spell you can only use on... Is it an enchantment? It sounds like it would be an enchantment. Not an enchantment. Amaturgy? <laughs> yeah. So you cast this on a forest, and it makes people desert. Um, I don't know if that would work, because most of his army is um, sacred, who so usually have quite high magic resistance, um, quite high morale. Uh, and it's a difficult morale check, or a difficult MR check. So it might not be great, but we had a, an N5 mage ready here to cast it on this province when someone moved into it. Um, but because of those battles, the Nature 5 mage um, retreated to Jen, and now she's out of range, because it's a 4 range spell. <laughs> now it's 5 provinces away, so that kind of sucks. I had a um, universal range booster, but it's ended up on this army, unfortunately. Uh, it's currently on this guy, because it was on my Prophet who died. So this would have fixed range, but yeah. I really wanted to hit this province with Beckoning. That's a shame. Oh uh, yeah. So let's look at things now. So my Cyclops doesn't have his shock resist at the moment. He's in the water. So I don't want to send him anywhere aggressively until he can get his shock resist back from the storm spill. Um, so he's moving up to this fort to just hide for a second. Uh, these guys that were going to go underwater and then help out over here, yeah, not going to do that anymore. <laughs> these guys are going to also move to the fort. Just basically lots of stuff over here. Moving into the fort, just so that you can put together an army. Uh, and while that's happening, I alchemized a frankly disgusting number of gems into fire gems so that we can cast a bunch of uh, enchanted fire attacks on this stack. I don't know if that's going to be as effective as it was versus Atapek, because these guys are a lot tougher, and they probably cast better spells when they're being assassinated, I don't know. 
Uh, but we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I mean, if they're all successful, like, that takes out a quarter of the mages in this army, which would be very nice. It'd be nice if we did that and then did the beckoning. Huh? It might really mess up this army. Uh, but for now, everything's just moving into this fort while we do one turn to see if the fire attacks are useful. If the fire attacks are good, we'll just keep alchemizing fire gems and just kind of whittle down the stack before we have a fight. Um, if they're not successful, I guess we just have to sit here and try and prepare for our defense. Um, we do have these guys going underwater who could raid the back. It'd be annoying. Um, but we also need to not like ignore Zatapek. We will continue being obnoxious if we don't um, keep taking their stuff. So, uh, yeah, awkward position over here, but mostly just moving stuff into this fort. Uh, there is still stuff moving underwater that's kind of over here, so there's still this stuff in reserve too. Uh, and this stuff is taking green waters. There's still a few things staying underwater to take, keep taking territory, but the most important stuff is just moving into this fort. Uh, more sacred on the way too. Uh, some of the items over here have been removed from this army uh, and shoved over to Greenwoods. Because I'm just going to make sure that this province is defended. Uh, we got our first Ether Lord Descent. I'm going to try using it as a caster. It's a bit annoying because they're Berserkers, so if they get hit, they're going to start running into combat. But I guess we'll just try spamming Twist Fate on them and <laughs> try to make sure he doesn't get hit. He's got a shield and he's got Earth Shield. So I don't know. Good luck to him not getting hit. Um, but basically this army is just being set up as an actual communion now with um, a bunch of people just spamming soul slay. So if another giant drops onto this province, probably gets soul slayed. They've only got 17 magic resistance, so... Also got a water mage over here who's going to wear a bracelet and then cast water power and then do call wizards. Which summons 12 wizards. <laughs> Might be cool, I don't know. Uh, everyone else is just going to spam summons if they can do summons. Uh, lots of killer mantises and um, some hastes, salamanders. So we're trying to defend that, ignoring this at the moment because he can't break in. Um, we'll, we'll see how effective Soul Slay spamming is, and if it's effective, I guess we can just break siege with the mages. Um, but I don't want to risk him dropping like a like multiple giants onto this fort this turn to try and protect it. So I'm just going to sit tight over here for now, summoning boars inside the fort because having lots of shafts seems to be good against the giants as well. We can just hold them in place while we spam Soul Slays. Probably the plan. That's what's happening over here. Uh, down here, we've got a little raiding force now. I'm going to start taking some of Zatapex territory. Uh, we're storming the fort in Bonelands so we can do something with this army too. Still moving mages down to help replenish it. Probably going to strip a lot of items off this army to help fight against uh, all the fours though. Uh, if we can get through here, of course, there is a route directly from Bonelands into the Lillifor's back, which is pretty good. It's a thought. But if we let Zatapet get, get back into the game, they are just going to spend all of their resources um, harassing us, I think. That's going to be annoying to deal with. I think that's the turn, though. We are forging a bunch of stuff, too. There's lots of um, items being forged. Usual summons, though. Um, still doing bits of site searching. Rads and coral blades. Uh, another arcane lens so that we can do beckoning if we need to. There's all the fire attacks. Uh, still trying to build that palace side since I paid for it. Doing blight on Lilifors as well. Trying to hurt his income a little bit, I suppose. So blight takes away some gold and causes a small amount of unrest. I'll just cast it on his cap. How that goes. He did get a mage feeble-minded this turn. Trying to scry. I think we tried to scry the throne, right? Kind of a shame. Uh, we do have a healer somewhere, though. He survived, yeah. I guess you can come back and try and heal that. Uh, but that's it for this turn, I think. Uh, just going to do a partial while I check the video and then I'll submit. Uh, that's 1072, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Hello, welcome back. Uh, this is a very big turn for messages. So let's kind of group them. First up, we did a lot of small fire attacks. Uh, some of them bounced off. It was a bit unlucky when it did, though. Um, a lot of them managed to kill. But there's one getting a kill. That one didn't. Uh, that one did. Uh, that one did. But what usually happens is that these mages spam 
the Phantasmal Beast thing. Which is a pretty good match for the Fire Elementals because these guys have increased magic resistance because they're enchanted ones. And they've got the Fire Shield. And these guys have tons of attacks that require a magic resistance roll. So most of them just die on the Fire Elite and don't really do anything. That's pretty good. Um, but they do have to walk quite a long way to actually get into combat is the problem. I'm, I'm so confused why the assassinations are always so far apart, it's very strange. Anyway, the ones that are successful look something like that. And the ones that aren't, um, the Fire Elite just gets killed by the summons. Uh, we also bounce off a Clovelder as well at some point, but um, yeah, I mean we're never going to kill these things. This one's just on spellcasting duty though, no items. Um, so about half of our viral att attacks were successful, which is something I suppose. Um, we also got hit a lot by Seeking Arrows. Um, this is one of the reasons why I wanted Shields of Valor on all my mages. Um, but actually it's the stems that smells magic missile protection, not the arrow from its course, and he got away without a scratch. So everyone who has a shield gets that message. Um, a couple guys though, oh there's another one with a the shield. There's one guy who gets picked off, if I can find it. Um, this guy. This is my Hydromancer who was underwater. I didn't even know that uh, Seeking Arrow could target things underwater, so there we go. So most of our guys survive the arrows except the Hydromancer. Uh, we also got attacked by a Putrid Ox Head. Um, this is fine. Just an assassin. Gets killed really easily by a druid who just summons. And uh, the last thing we were hit by was uh, Beckoning. Ironically enough. Although it turns out this fall just sucks. <laughs> 14 units got hit and of them only 10 deserted. Oh well. Uh, I think that's all of the interesting stuff in their ritual phase though. Um, we did cluster Blight and did some site searching. Uh, we attacked some underwater provinces. We also got um, we got put under siege in Urfel. So still 37 Clive Neophytes, 4 Soothsayers and 3 Elders. Um, it's going to be a difficult fight, 94 Sacreds too. I don't know, but we'll, we'll try and defend the fort when we get stormed. Uh, to control of Elkland, uh, Toledo we managed to take and green waters we bounced off, unfortunately. A lot of province defense. We only had the skeletons. Um, I think this would have had the hydromancer as well, but he died. Not sure exactly, I can't remember. Uh, but more importantly, then, there was a battle at the fortress in Bonelands. This is the other one of Zatapek's thrones. Um, there's way more mages here than I thought there'd be. I thought because we won the Break Siege fight, just about, I thought this fort was basically just empty. So I didn't really change any scripting or anything, I just sent them in. thought it'd be fine. Um, so yeah, a lot more mages than I would like to have seen. And uh, I do lots of this spell. And this time it hits right inside our mages, so... <laughs> uh, not good. Um, <laughs> the opposite of good. Uh, this spell is devastating, especially since since I, I didn't change our script, so our guys cast the Steel Skin spell which made them lightning vulnerable, uh, which is not great. Bad all around. I don't know how we're still doing this for- ah, there he is. So we had one mage who was separate from the others and didn't get hit by the lightning spell, which is just enough to keep our Sacreds in combat, because these guys have tons of morale. 20 morale. So by pure luck, we managed to actually successfully take the fort, but... Um, pretty catastrophic. It's by far the biggest loss we've had in terms of mages, probably units, and more importantly, items. Um, I really wanted to free up all those items this turn to go and, like, massively gear out the other fort that's being sieged by Lilifors. Uh, which we cannot do now because we lost all of our mages except the one who managed to survive. So, I have no idea how many gems we just lost in terms of items. Probably hundreds, not to mention all of the cap-only mages. Um, so that's really bad. 
worst turn of the game. And mostly it's just because, yeah, I, I just assumed this was going to be an easy fight and didn't really pay attention to it. I could have spread my mages out, I could have had the units pushed forward set to attack immediately to, you know, start disrupting the mages right away. I could have not scripted um, <laughs> lightning vulnerability on ourselves. Lots of things I could have done, but didn't, so that's the way it goes. Uh, the turns take a very, very long time to do now, so uh, you kind of just focus on the important stuff and then ignore the stuff you think is fine. Uh, events still really mixed as well. Uh, lots of bad stuff, and then weirdly lots of good stuff as well. Like, we've got the global up that does help. We got like a bunch of um, gold events this turn. Maybe that's from that. So there's Kogne got two five five. Lupia got three three eight. Uh, we've got a really nice one in Nethermark where we gained the temple. But then we managed to patrol out one of these Clovelder guys. It didn't even occur to me that these guys are stealthy. Uh, anyway, we got a free temple in this province, and then the. The harpies patrol out this guy, so we lost the temple immediately because <laughs> he takes the province. Uh, so that's too bad. Uh, we drowned our death mage. He did not gain a level of death, unfortunately. Uh, patrolled out a bunch of scout, uh, Clovelder, scout, Lico, 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 Lico. They're all on my throne of death. Um, and that's another weird one as well. So one of our scouts got discovered in a keist. This province has 320 units in the province defense. <laughs> what does that even look like? That is a lot of province defense. Jesus Christ. Um, so that's over here. So we were going to march this army down, but oh, we would have had some big fights against PD. Um, but this is all we have left in this throne now, just this one guy. Some units. So yeah. And I think that's mostly everything. Under Siege and Earth walls are damaged and Gent and they can't harm our walls. The guy in Gent has moved off though. So Gent's unsieged at the moment. Right, that's a lot of messages, so let's try and go through this turn quickly. Uh, I can see lots of Zoko stuff here. He's finishing off um Gondwald. So we did just lose horribly here, so he could just march stuff into us now, I suppose. I don't know. But we're moving down a bunch of mages to sit in this throne at least, so we'll try and keep it safe as best we can. Got a little squad of raiders moving down. Uh, and we would have some more guys moving through the water, but I'm going to pull them back and give them some um, shields of valor so that they've got earth shield, because I don't want them just getting randomly picked off by seeking arrows, now that I know that seeking arrow can hit things underwater. Um, so not a lot is going to be happening over here for a while, because we just lost our entire army, so <laughs> uh, yeah. Not much to say over here. This is still just moving stuff into this fort to defend it, or moving patrollers out to patrol provinces. So standard stuff over here. And over here, yeah, we're getting sieged by like 50 Ur mages. I'm not sure we can defend against this, to be honest. Uh, and we just lost all of our items, so mostly I'm just doing a lot of forging. And the only things I'm forging now are coral blades, rings of regeneration, and storm spells. Because all I'm worried about now is just making sure as many mages as possible can survive lightning damage. So they can all have increased hit points, regeneration, and 15 lightning resistance. I think is what the spool gives. Yeah. So they're the only three items I'm focusing on making. Oh, as well as Shields of Valor as well. We've got two people who can make those. So not too worried about anything else. I just want to get as many of our mages as possible more resistant to lightning damage. And that's all. Uh, I'm doing three more casts of Enchanted Fire Attack on this stack. See if we can kill a couple more mages. Uh, my Earth guy, my Cyclops, is doing Lion Sentinels. It puts the lions in the Fort Storm. <laughs> no idea if that spells any good or not. I've never seen it used, but why not? We'll stick them down. And other than that, yeah, just going to sit tight in this province and wait to see if we get stormed and see if we can when the fort storm or not. We'll have to see how it goes. I could teleport some really powerful stuff like the Ether Lord, even my god, into the fort, I think. So we might do that before the storm happens, but uh, yeah, that's all that's happening at the moment. And up here, I'm putting two domes over this province because I, I have the mages here to do it. The Ether Lord can do Astral Dome, the Hydromancer can do Water Dome. So I might as well just try to protect it a bit. 
just in case this province is getting hit by stuff. Uh, we are still building a palisades here, it's going to be four more months. And that is pretty much all that's happening at the moment. So this unfortunately has completely stalled us around here. And we just have to wait and see how this wraps up, unfortunately. Uh, we do almost have Conjuration 8. Oh, we'll, we're going to hit it. I should have set a new target. I didn't realize. But yeah, we'll be able to summon Bishopfish at least. So we can claim thrones if we're still in the game. Uh, so that's good. Might need to start pushing more stuff towards this port, but I, I don't know. I'm not sure how much it's going to help. It's tricky as well because there could be um, Blowvelders anywhere. It could really disrupt a small army quite badly. We'll just see what happens. There's not much in my cap at the moment. We had um, recruitment delayed by all the unrest, which is almost gone now. It's down to 25, so that's good. Uh, but that's basically it for this turn. Um, so it's already been submitted. What turn was that? That was turn 73. I uh, am. Yeah. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.